So first things first, we're going to start out with our SPF. I have a little sample version of the product Photo Protector Isdeen Pediatrics Fusion Fluid Mineral Baby, which has an SPF of 50 plus. Now, I was gifted this when I went to the chemist and um, picked up some medication and I really like the sunscreen, but the only thing is I bought the full size and I was like so astonished because the price, I was literally shocked. I can't remember the exact price and the exact size of the product, but it was shockingly high. So. I might still have to look around and see if I can find a different SPF that doesn't like um, cause my skin to burn a little bit or so or sting a bit because the price for this is just absolutely ridiculous. But even though the price I find it too high, the product itself is really good. I'm not really sure why, but around my nose, like this area exactly around my nose and sometimes the area around my mouth, like the corners of my mouth, seem to be super sensitive and very often when I wear sunscreen, no matter which kind it is, the skin, it kind of like stings, which I do not get with this product, which is fantastic. For foundation today, I'm going to be trying a new foundation that is new to me. It is Bourjois Paris. It is called Always Fabulous and it says on it 24 hours extreme resist. Full coverage foundation with SPF 20. And I have mine in the shade 115 Golden Ivory. I did um, order this online, so I have no idea if this shade is going to match me. We'll see. I'm going to be applying the foundation with a drugstore foundation brush from the brand Ebeline. And I'm going to zoom you in just a tiny bit. So that's pretty much one pump and we'll see how far we get with that amount. Okay, so I was quite skeptical, especially as the undertone does look, hmm, yeah, I would say probably neutral, leaning yellow. So I wasn't sure if it was going to look good on me, but I actually think the color match was quite good. And the foundation is, I would say very sheer coverage, hmm, always fabulous. It says full coverage. I don't know. I, upon first application and one pump for my face, I don't think it's full coverage. It doesn't seem full coverage to me. It seems to be more sheer, maybe buildable medium coverage. Um, I'll have to see with a second pump. Okay, so after applying the second coat, I definitely think... Um, I definitely still think this is not a full coverage foundation. For me, I would say it's probably sheer to medium, buildable, um, but I might be able to p apply a little bit more than two pumps, but I think that would just be way too much. So I would say this is a, at max medium coverage. When I look closely at it in the mirror and when I zoom you in, I don't know if you can see, but I do actually think the undertone is not quite right for me. It is a little bit too yellow, although on camera it looks it looks okay, but you can definitely see the... Okay, my, my neck is white, um, but you can definitely see on my chest that I'm way more pink, so I would definitely need um, a shade with much more cooler undertones but unfortunately bourgeois doesn't seem to have such a wide shade range so um it's affordable it was okay to try but um not really suitable for my kind of complexion
Next, I'm going to be priming my eyes with one of my favorite eyeshadow primers from Art Deco. It is just called Eyeshadow Base. It has no real pigment to it, but a light pearlescent wash of um, sheen on the lids. For eyeshadow today, I think I'm going to be doing something fall appropriate. Well, not fall appropriate, but more muted colors. I'm going to be using two eyeshadows that are new to me. I think they are pretty new in general, but I'm not sure. But anyway, they're new to me. Both of the eyeshadows come from the drugstore. The one eyeshadow is from Catrice and it is from the collection Art Couleur. And it is in the color 300 Take Me to Dessert. It is a matte nude, beige nude eyeshadow, which I'm going to be applying to the crease. The second eyeshadow is also from the drugstore and it is from a brand called Trend It Up. It says Trend It Up Shimmer Cream Eyeshadow in the shade 030. And it is kind of a more muted olive army green kind of color. Here are two swatches. This is the matte one from Catrice. This is the one from Trend It Up, the army green kind of color. And it has a very pretty uh, sheen to it, like a pearly sheen. No, no glitter pieces or anything like that. I'm going to apply the matte nude shade in my crease and blend it up a bit, but just with a normal wet and wild blending brush. Seems to be quite good color payoff. This is just a fluffy brush that I did tap off the excess. Just going to build it up a little by taking a little bit more on my brush. So I want to start filming regularly now. We did move into a new flat and we have an extra room here. We have much more space and I finally have put together a filming setup that I think I can actually leave out so I don't have to build up the whole setup every time I want to film and I hope this helps me get into the swing of filming regularly for you guys and actually just getting used to the filming process much more so we can talk about everyday crap no, so we can talk about everything from little things to big things, from important things to funny to sad to whatever. So I hope that the setup and the new flat, etc., will, will now be enable me to film much more often and also to create a better bond with you guys. And I am going to be practicing on applying my makeup and chatting to you about everyday stuff and whatnot whilst doing my makeup at the moment i find it kind of i don't know what it is it's like i have to concentrate um, when i'm applying my makeup and i'm filming myself it's so weird i don't know it's random anyway um but that is the plan okay so i think i will leave it at that for now so a really nice color payoff with just one swipe Ooh, very nice. And because this is a shimmer eyeshadow, it's not a shiny one or a metallic one, but it has that like pearlescence to it. I am applying it with my finger, which I always prefer to do because I just think the color payoff is way better. Just taking it a tiny bit up into the crease so I can blend everything together. Taking my same blending brush from before and going to blend everything together. Yeah, you get a really, really nice gradient between the two. Okay, so while I do think that that looks really pretty, I think it's missing a tiny little bit of depth. So I'm going to go in with another drugstore eyeshadow from Trend It Up, it's called the number one eyeshadow with integrated primer, hmm, interesting. In the color 023 and it is a 
rich chocolatey brown, but also seems to have, I think, it's, I think it has a satin finish. I'm going to be applying it with a flat shader brush. This is one from Leni Brush, the LBE 16 Flat Smudger. But any flat, dense brush will do. I'm just going to be applying it to the outer corners. Oh, let me just swatch it for you. Okay, so that is the dark brown eyeshadow. It has a tiny, well, I wouldn't really say shimmer, but I think it's a satin finish. So what have you guys been up to? Like I said, we moved in at the end of April last year. And so far we've really been enjoying it. Enjoying the new flat, enjoying the space. We've got shops right across the road where we can get groceries and stuff, walking distance to chemists and stuff like that. So we've got everything we need. So the brown eyeshadow is nice, it goes on well. It's not the most pigmented eyeshadow, but that being said, as for everyday looks, I'm not the boldest eyeshadow um, gal. I don't know how you say it. I don't like, I don't like typically use like or wear really bold eyeshadow looks. Um, and sometimes dark colors I find to be a little bit intimidating. So I actually like the darker color. Um, that is not full-on packed to the punch with pigment, so I actually like that. But if you really are looking for something very pigmented, um, this might not be the shadow for you, or you might have to build it up or use like a mixing medium with it. But I like it. Just blending everything together with the same brush that I used from before. There is a tiny bit of fallout. Just quickly filled in my brows with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade 03 Auburn and set everything in place with my Essence Clear Brow Gel, which for me is no longer so clear because I've been using it so much. It is much loved. And no matter how it now looks, I still love using it. Okay, and because I want to do some false lashes today, I'm going to line my top lash line with the NYX Professional Makeup Slide On, Glide On, Stay On and definitely Turn On Waterproof Extreme Shine Eyeliner. Whoa, that is a mouthful. In the color 07 Jet Black. Oh, it's so funny, I only realized now it says underneath it, underneath it, the name of this eyeliner, it says, in brackets, this eyeliner is so good, the name had to be this long. <laughs> good grief. Just doing a thin line right on the lash line. And only on the outer two thirds. Just going to take a small brush and smudge it out a bit. All right, time for lashes. Now, I usually never do lashes, but I've been watching so many videos and they always look so nice. I mean, I can't complain about my lashes. I have pretty nice lashes when I use um, mascara, but I wanted to try some. These ones I just got off Shein and they were very inexpensive. I'll have a look for the price and put it in um, on the screen somewhere. They look really nice and light and fluttery. It's a pack of six lashes. They look like this. So they're corner lashes. With a clear band, which I like. And for lash glue, I was at Primark this week and I saw they had this lash glue with a brush applicator. And I thought, hmm, why not? What did it cost, does it say on here? Oh. It wasn't very expensive, it was very inexpensive. So I decided to get this and we are going to be applying the lashes with this glue. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> this is what it looks like. That's what the brush looks like. Okay, so we're going to measure the lash to the eye to see 
if the length is okay. I think it's about right. Hmm. Well, they seem to be on, so we'll just leave them like that and hope they adhere a little bit more. In the meantime, I'm going to go in with blush. Today I have chosen Melba from MAC. It is a nice and neutral warm blush with no shimmer. And I will be applying it with a drugstore. I'm not actually even sure if this is a powder brush, but uh, it's a drugstore tapered brush from Ebeline. All right, time for mascara. I think the lashes should be properly stuck. For mascara today, I'm going to be using my favorite mascara at the moment, which is from Maybelline New York, the Colossal Curl Bounce Mascara in 01 Very Black. Oh wow, and suddenly they don't look that natural anymore. Ooh. Okay. Every time. I am just going to do a little bit of a cleanup and I will be right back. Okay, back from the cleanup and while the mascara dries down a little bit, I am going to be using a new concealer and it is not just new to me, it is new in general and I am very excited because it is from Charlotte Tilbury. I got the powder, the new powder, and I got the new concealer. We're going to start out with the concealer, which is called Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. And it says above it, science and color, clinically proven results, conceals, corrects, brightens, and lifts the look of skin, medium buildable coverage, and 16 hour wear. Hmm, not bad. And I got mine in the shade Too Fair. Now, there is a shade that is lighter than Fair, but I think it looked too light for me and I don't think it, I definitely don't think it had the right undertone. So I think it had a neutral or a yellow undertone. So I got the second shade. It comes in a tube with a doe foot. So this is the shade Too Fair, right over there. And it definitely looks light enough, so let's see how this works. Oh, I'm going to be applying it with a new concealer brush to me anyway. It's also from the drugstore from Ebeline and it is just called the concealer brush. A little bit wider and tapered. I really like these drugstore brushes anyway. The ones from Ebeline are really good, in my opinion. So, how much should we start out with? Hmm. Okay, let's start out with those three dots. Uh, very brightening. Going to drag some of it up into the inner corner. Ooh, definitely brightening. So just bringing it right up into this corner because that's where I get very dark. So you definitely have a bit of playtime with this concealer, which is why I did both eyes at the same time. So you can see, because sometimes you know you have a concealer and you put it on and it practically dries down and you like stuck with three dots of concealer in your face. So that is good. And it blends out really well. I just have to finish blending out here. Wow. Okay, so 
that actually looks really really good it's really really brightening it almost has like a not a sheen but like a yeah, definitely like a light reflecting um, light reflecting um, attributes to it so that's really pretty I'm going to add a tiny bit more to see if it is buildable Hmm, that might have even been too much. That really looks beautiful. That looks absolutely stunning. I'm very happy with that. This concealer is beautiful. I'm not sure it would be the exact right tone for blemishes for me because it is so light. I mean, we could try it on this one. Let's try it. Four strategically placed dots. Blends out like a dream. Well, it definitely covered that spot. Okay, so it looked like it really did a good job of covering my little friend up there. And it did that without attracting more attention to that area, which is obviously what we want in a concealer when we use it for blemishes. So, so far so good. Now for powder, and I also got the new powder from Charlotte Tilbury, the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish. It also says above it, Science and Color, Complexion Perfecting Eye and Face Micro Powder. Brightening, blurring, lifting effect, targets, dark circles and shadows. Yes, 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 yes. Those are all things that we need and want. Um, what else does it say? Oh, okay, that, that seems to be in French, the rest. Okay, so I got mine in the shade Fair Medium. This is what the packaging looks like. Very pretty, white and gold. So it comes with a mirror on the bottom and the powder itself looks white. So probably translucent, and this is the shade Fair Medium. I will swatch it. Ooh, it feels so smooth. That's what it looks like on the finger, so very white. That's what it looks like swatched, it's blended. Okay, when you blend it, it blends into practically nothing. It feels very, very smooth. I'm going to be applying the powder with the mini multitask brush from Real Techniques. Basically just setting my T-zone and under my eyes. It's crazy but this powder really does have blurring properties. I think it looks fantastic absolutely fantastic what do you think let me know in the comments if you've tried this and um, if you like the way it looks i don't think um it doesn't make me look white under my eyes um and it's definitely smoothing i can see that on my cheeks so i'm very very impressed yay i mean uh it costs quite a bit of money so double yay <laughs> For lips, I'm going to be using the NYX Professional Makeup Lip Liner in Suede. It's a matte lip liner in the shade 40 Shanghai. And in combination with the lip liner, I'm going to be using one of the new Maybelline New York Superstay Vinyl Ink Lipsticks in the shade 15 Peachy. 
The packaging is so cool. There is a swatch. Super creamy and completely opaque with one swipe. Okay, so the second last step of this makeup look is going to be highlighter and I'm going to be using the Physicians Formula Translucent Highlighter, Mineral Glow Pearls. Just going to apply it with an Essence fan brush. Hmm. Yeah, a nice subtle glow and pale enough for my skin. So if you have a complexion similar to mine, this will be a nice kind of um, natural glowy highlighter. Putting some of that just under my brow. That just ties everything together. Oh, just FYI, the swatch that I did, the Superstay Vinyl Ink swatch on my hand, I just wiped it off, so it's only been on for like two minutes or something. And it did leave a little bit of a tint. So that's also nice to see that if it fades, it leaves a little bit of color on your lips. Okay, so the last step of the makeup routine for today is going to be setting spray. I'm going to be using the Catrice Long Lasting Prime and Fine Multi-Talent Fixing Spray. Prepares the skin, improves makeup wear and refreshes complexion. That's what it says. Oh no, actually there's one more thing that I still want to do and I wanted to add a pop of color matching the green eyeshadow on the lower lash line. I forgot that. Um, I will be using the NYX Epic Wear Liner Stick in the shade 03 All Time Olive. It seems to also have a nice pearlescent finish to it. So not shiny, but nice and pearly. I think it's exactly the right eyeliner for this look. So that is our makeup look for today. A nice kind of fall-ish or transition into fall-ish kind of makeup eye look and some warmth in the crease. The products I tried, the brand new products to me and also some of them are brand new like the Charlotte Tilbury, the concealer and the powder I think are absolutely, absolutely bombastic. I think they are fantastic. Um, I will have to keep using them to see how they wear and um, you know throughout time or throughout a few hours of the day etc because this is just my thoughts upon first application, but otherwise very, very excited. Excited for my new setup here, for the new-ish apartment, and hopefully being able to film regularly for you guys. Um, let me know if any of you have tried any of these products, um, new or old, doesn't matter to me. I always find it interesting when you can like exchange thoughts and experiences, and sometimes um, you get the... Um, one or other tip from somebody so just let me know other than that all i can say it was super fun filming for you guys again today and i hope to see you all soon in my next video bye